Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another junk journal with me video. Today's junk journal with me is really, really long. You may want to watch it in a couple of sessions. I'm going to try and cut it down a little bit, but the reason why this journal with me is so long is because in these pages, I am documenting a recent trip to New Zealand to visit my sister. And so as you can see here at the start of the video, I have a lot of of ephemera to get into my journal and this doesn't even include the photos that I wanted to include in these spreads as well so I have a lot of stuff I have this book that I got at an op shop in New Zealand which has some great maps and some imagery in it that I want to use as well plus some stickers and patches and postcards and stuff that I picked up over there as well so the first thing I did was I went ahead and I printed out all of the pictures that I wanted to include I went out and I bought myself a 60 pack of Instax photo printer film so that I could print a ton of pictures on my Instax mini link I think I may have printed close to 40 pictures I didn't count them but I printed a lot and I did spend a lot of time going through all of my pictures editing my pictures, picking which ones I wanted to include so that it wasn't too repetitive, but also so that it was representing the trip and my memories really well. And this journaling actually ended up taking me a few days to complete. The first day I spent many hours just like printing photos, organizing all of my photos and my ephemera into the days. So as you can see here along the bottom, I am grouping my photos together in sort of like a rough timeline of when things happened and then I'm also matching my ephemera with the photos for the order that they happened just so that I can try and keep my journaling sort of semi chronological. I did end up journaling across many pages and so I wanted to be able to like read the trip and look back on the trip in order of events. So I was really excited to get this journaling done but at the same time I was really overwhelmed just because I had such a large volume of stuff to get in and I knew that including so many pictures was going to be really difficult. I didn't want my pages just to be filled with photos. I also wanted to include my ephemera. I wanted to include written journaling and I also wanted to paint some of the places that we visited. So I was kind of overwhelmed with figuring out how to include all of those things in the pages. And I think that's why it took me such a long time to get this journaling complete. But the first step was definitely printing my photos and then sorting through my ephemera and trying to group things together in order of when things actually happened and things that we did. And that kind of helped me to break it down into smaller parts. So instead of being overwhelmed with the volume of stuff on my desk, I could just take one small section, one small group of things, work that group into my journal and then move along to the next group. So I think that's a really good tip for journaling when you have a lot of stuff or if you're going back and doing catch up journaling, if you have a lot of stuff accumulated, you can kind of group those things into smaller categories and then work through those groups one by one. For the first page of my journaling, I wanted to include just some notes and some bits of ephemera from actually just traveling to Sydney the day before we left on the plane. So, so I've got like some receipts from some food that we bought. And then I'm also including my boarding pass and some photos from the day that we traveled over to New Zealand. And so again, my photos are printed on my Instax mini link. So they're all the same size and they're quite small photos. I think they're like two by three, which made including so many pictures that a little bit more doable because I could kind of cram them all together. You'll see throughout this journaling that I tuck some pictures into pockets. I fill some pages up with a lot of pictures and then I also like sprinkle some through. So there's a bit of variety in the way that I included those photos so that each page looks a little bit different. So I'm just organizing my first pieces of ephemera on the first spread. So there wasn't a whole lot for the first page, which was kind of good because it just gave me a nice starting place. And I wanted to include everything in a way where I could just see it. Everything was just flat. There was nothing really interactive on this page. It was just a matter of sticking those few things on to kind of introduce the story and introduce the trip, if that makes sense. I had this map from New Zealand from somewhere that we went 
and I decided to use it in the background of this page just to kind of fill in that blank space. I wanted to add some kind of color and decoration to the page but at the same time I had quite a few bits and pieces so the page was already quite full and I felt that using that map in the background would just help to bring a little pop of color and it also is a really cool way to incorporate like maps and bits of ephemera that you've collected. So I didn't have a specific purpose for that map that I wanted to do with it later on in the journaling. So I felt fine using it on this first page. I'm using this little piece of aeroplane paper, patterned paper, just along the top of the page. Again, just to add a little bit of interest and in decoration to the page. The paper's not super colorful. Uh, I feel like my journaling is usually a lot more colorful than this, but I liked that little pop of patterns in the background. And then I also have this little green sort of journaling card or label piece that I'm going to use to do some journaling. Again, just to add a little bit more color to the page. I'm sticking things down either with my Bostick glue stick and a stapler or some double-sided tape. So that was it for the first page, flipping over onto the next page, I wanted to start journaling about the first day of our trip, which we just spent at home with my sister and meeting her family over there. And we did a really fun like paint and sip activity where we each painted a different woodland animal for her son. So she's just had a baby fairly recently, which is why my sisters and I went over to visit. And so it was just a really fun activity. We thought we'd all paint a different animal that she could then use if she wants to to decorate like his bedroom. So as well as that picture I also have some other pictures just from actually at her home. So before we get into like traveling and exploring there's some really sweet pictures of my nephew and my niece and my sisters and just all of us hanging out at her place and I wanted to try and fit some of these favorite pictures all together. On this or on one of these first pages so there's a lot of rearranging happening on every single page in this spread again just because I have so many things to fit I was just trying to work out the best way to fit everything and to not make it look too photo heavy as well because I want to make sure I'm leaving room for written journaling and any other ephemera pieces that I have that I want to include so most of the instax photos I'm sticking down with my double-sided tape and then sometimes I'm also using a stapler just to reinforce it to make sure it's going to stay stuck. Or if the paper behind it's not super strong, I'll just add a staple just to help reinforce it. As I journal, I'm also thinking about where I'm going to be able to write on the page. And I'm also adding like little journaling cards or little pieces that I can write directly on top of. This is a little map that I pulled out of the book that I found at a thrift store over in New Zealand. So I found this book, it's like a road map or road guide to New Zealand. And so I pulled out the relevant maps of some of the places that we went to and I'm using them in the spreads. So this map of Rotorua is going to be in the background of the page. And I think I just stuck it straight down onto the back of this page that's in my journal. This particular page in my journal is quite thin and flimsy and it, it's a little bit see-through as well. So when I stuck that map down, when you flick back, you can actually see the map peeking through, which is another cool little element to the page. Once I had stuck the map down, I also just took a little bit of washi tape down the middle of the page just to help that stick nice and flush so that it's not gonna come up and get wrecked. And that washi tape is going to get mostly hidden in the end by the rest of the journaling on the page, which is completely fine. That was the purpose of the tape. I'm using this postcard of Rotorua as a way to extend this little page and to give me a little bit more room to include my ephemera from this place. I'm just sticking that in with some washi tape and creating a little flap that lifts up upwards on the page. And then I can stick some photos and stuff on the back of that so that Again, it just gives me that little bit more room. It just extends the page. So that's just a great way to give yourself a little bit more space when you have a lot of stuff to include. This is a shorter page in my journal as well. And I had quite a few photos to include on this page. So it was a little bit tricky because I felt like I was making it too bulky. But in the end, I think it turns out okay. My actual journal is almost full. So very soon I'm going to have a completed journal flip through up on my channel. So I'm really excited to share 
the journal all complete. It is starting to become quite bulky. I've only got a few pages left to fill, so I think it's going to be fine. As I'm journaling and I'm not 100% sure about some of my choices, I will just leave things loose. I won't stick them down until I know exactly what I want to do, but I'll just lay them out where I think they're going to go. I'll try and arrange it as best as I can. And if I'm really not sure about something, I will just leave it and come back to it. So I gave myself a rough idea of what to do on the shorter page. And then I just started working on the page beside it and then came back and decided to stick things down. So I've got, I think, four Polaroid pictures, which I'm sticking directly down on the page and on the back of the postcard. And then for the other couple of photos that I had left, I decided to slip into this little glassine see-through bag or envelope and I'm going to stick that directly to the page as well so there's some extra photos inside that you can actually pull out and interact with this does become a little bit bulky so there's three instax photos tucked inside that pocket which does bulk up quite quickly but again I think my journal is going to cope okay with that bulk on the right side of the page I decided to include one of these beautiful colored paper bags as a way to again give myself more room in the spread so I'm packing a lot of stuff into the page but I want to do it in a way where it doesn't look that way so if you incorporate pockets or flip outs you can add extra things in more of a hidden way so it doesn't look it doesn't look too like photo heavy and so I am trying to spread things out as best as I can. So that paper bag is just going to become basically a way for me to add an extra page that's detached from the journal. So I'm going to have a piece of paper that slips inside the paper bag and then I can have extra photos and ephemera on top of that. So I played around with some different ideas and then I settled on the idea of slipping that map of Topor inside the paper bag and then I can again I can stick my photos on top of that map and I can also stick photos on top of the paper bag. For the paper bag itself I folded up the bottom of the paper bag to create like a little pocket along the bottom. The bag is just slightly too tall for my journal it would have been fine to have the top part of the bag overhanging but I thought it would be better in this case to make it fit and so I just folded up the bottom which also gives me a pocket where I can slip things in and I just use my stapler to create this pocket so to kind of seal it up and then that gives me a little bit of freedom to slip extra things inside of it or to have photos loose that sit inside of that pocket so the paper bag kind of becomes a double pocket you've got your actual bag and then you've got the pocket along the bottom and if you wanted to you could also attach this to the page with like double-sided tape on three sides and you could have a pocket behind the actual paper bag so it could be like a three-way pocket if you wanted to add that extra space so I put a staple on the inner side of the paper bag and then I stuck it down on the page and then I added the staple on the outer side of the paper bag which also goes through the page itself so that's just a way to make sure it's really reinforced and attached to the page I obviously couldn't get my staple to the inner side because it would not reach on that side of my journal so that's why I did that initially and then added that extra staple last just helps attach it to the page in the top right of the page I'm stapling some receipts and also a little empty sugar packet from the Airbnb that we stayed in in Topor and one of the receipts has like a handwritten messy itinerary that we made up together so that we could try and cram in a bunch of stuff on this particular day or the following day just to make sure that we could see some sights in the very short time that we had. I decided to slip my two larger photos which I actually printed on my Canon selfie so there was just a few pictures that I printed on my Canon selfie the rest were all on the Instax mini link so I had those two photos loose in the pocket and then I attached the Instax picture to the paper bag I attached my other photos from the Airbnb on the map inside of the bag and then I'm leaving some space to come back and do some written journaling later on. On the following page I decided to incorporate some of the like leaflets and brochures and bits of information and ephemera that I had collected on the trip as well as a bulk part of the pictures that I had. So on this page I'm going to create a very photo heavy spread where I'm just going to pack a bunch of these pictures from the same day all together. So 
I feel like this works fine because again, these pictures are all from the same day. They were all taken within a couple of hours. And for me, in my own mind and in my own memory, all of these moments are like compartmentalized together. So it makes sense to put them all together. And I feel really lucky as well that the Instax mini link pictures fit so well on these pages. Like a lot of the times when I've grouped a number of these pictures together and then tried to cram them into the same page, they fit really perfectly in the spaces where I wanted to stick them. So again, just playing around with ideas until I'm happy with the layout. I have some pictures from the Redwood Forest on the right side of the page and then all of the other pictures from this day on the left side of the page. And I've also put out a little illustration uh, from a children's book dictionary. It's the word fertile, but I actually just really liked the illustration. I felt like the countryside that was illustrated on this piece kind of reminded me of some of the places that we saw. And so I wanted to include that just to decorate the page. I've also got a sort of semi see-through paper bag that holds perfectly those leaflets and brochures that I'd collected. So those are slipped inside there. And then I'm going back to this book from New Zealand that I got at the op shop and I'm cutting out some of this beautiful blue border designs from that book again just to decorate the page. So one of these strips fit perfectly beside that white paper bag which I plan to stick to the page and then I'm just again revisiting those pictures where I have a bunch to stick together. So at first I was going to put these pictures sort of sideways on the page going up the page just so that I could fit more but then I decided to move that dictionary illustrated piece along the top of the page and just fit six of these pictures underneath it. So it's still quite photo heavy but I've added that little bit of color and decoration to the page which I really liked and then I decided to dedicate a whole page to the redwood forest on the next page so I took those pictures out and I put those other photos that were on the left of the page originally onto the right and I feel like this worked out really well. So now just going ahead and sticking everything in once I was happy with the layout. I again used my glue stick for the thinner pieces of paper and then I used my double sided tape for the photos. And then for the paper bag, I did not attach this straight away because I thought later on when I do my journaling, I would love to put the paper bag itself through my typewriter and actually type out some journaling along the bottom of it. And then I'm going to leave that and come back to it. On the following page, I'm going to dedicate this to the Redwood Forest. I just thought this was such a pretty place and it was one of the places that I wanted to paint in my journal. And so it kind of made sense to dedicate a spread to the forest. And so that's why I decided to take those pictures out from the previous page and to include them here instead. I've got another strip from that New Zealand book as well as a little playing card which I've had for a long time with a kiwi bird on it and then I've also got this little iron-on patch which I purchased at a souvenir shop at the Redwood Forest. So this is obviously supposed to be ironed onto fabric but I purchased it intending to glue it into my journal and so I want to incorporate it on the page for some nice bit of texture and decoration. So I'm trying to assemble my bits and pieces to the page whilst being mindful of where I'm going to paint. So all of the blank spaces that you see me leaving are going to be painted on or written on later on. Just fitting everything as best as I can whilst thinking ahead. So that can be kind of tricky at times to think ahead of what you want to do, but I really felt that it was best just to get all of my bits and pieces glued in before I started painting and writing. I used my wet PVA craft glue to stick the patch down on the page and that worked really really well. It attached really well and then I also just put a staple through just to help hold it while it dried really. Then moving on to the next page I've just got more bits of ephemera from some of the places we visited on our last day of adventures including this little piece from some soft toys that I purchased for my daughter. My daughter's name is Rue and these owls are called Ruru. Got those specifically for her as a little souvenir. And I also took a little visitor comment card, which you're supposed to leave for feedback, but I took one to include in my journal and I think that turned out really cool in the end as well. And again, I was super lucky because it just fit perfectly on this page. I didn't even have to cut it down at all. I'm using some journal cards as well from a 
can't remember what Maggie Hobbs collection it is, but they're really nice vintage sort of looking journal cards. And I'm just using those to fill in some blank spaces. So that little card in the bottom left corner, and then I overlapped a picture from this lookout and stapled my other bits of ephemera, like the receipts. Then again, moving on to the next page, I'm getting towards finishing attaching my last photos and ephemera. So I included a postcard on this page with washi tape so that I can lift it out, which will give me more room on the back. And then I also included those last few Instax photos on this spread as well. Again, thinking about where I want to add written journaling and where I want to add some painting later on. The little frog art was a little freebie from one of the places we visited as well. Then flipping the page over to work on the last page, I wanted to include my boarding pass from the flight home. I included a picture from the plane and I also included this little gold piece of packaging which I cut out of a chocolate box that my family at home had bought for me as like a little coming home present which was really cute. So now I'm just flicking through all of the pages. I'm just making sure that everything's stuck down and that I'm happy with the layout of all the pages. I'm really glad that I managed to get everything down. I felt so relieved once I got to this point because it had taken me such a long time. And then I actually put my journal away and I come back to it the following day to add my painting and my journaling. So the next day I came back with my paints and my pencils and my pen and I was ready to fill in some journaling and do some painting of some of the places that we visited so I'm just like refreshing myself looking through the pages again to see where I'm at and then deciding the next steps to finishing off the page and so I haven't done my written journaling at this point in time I think I decided to do my painting first in case I wanted to write on top of any of the little scenes that I painted I started with this small little sort of like countryside scene the reference that I'm using is just a picture that I took myself of one of the places that we visited and I'm just using my gouache paints to kind of paint in the scene and this is not perfect by any means and I didn't put any pressure on myself to create masterpieces in this journaling session or in my journal I just wanted to have a bit of fun painting some of the pretty things that we saw. One thing that really struck me about New Zealand was the beautiful trees that they have it, like it feels very familiar and similar to Australia in a lot of ways but also really different in a lot of ways and I really liked the trees so I'm actually using the book that I got at the op shop has it has a little page with some trees that you'll find in New Zealand and I'm kind of using that as a bit of a reference to paint some of the trees that we saw there so so this painting I'm just kind of layering out the paint adding in some shadows and some highlights and just I just basically continue along with it until I'm happy with how it looks so there's no like I don't really know when I'm going to be finished with the painting I just keep adding to it until I feel happy with it and it's not super realistic. I don't like painting super realistic. I like to make it a bit imaginative and sort of, it's just sort of how my mind saw it and my representation of it. So I like using bright colors and I just tried to pick colors that were similar to the colors in the photo and how I remember it in my mind as well. Then once I got the bulk part of the painting finished I went and I cut out a sheep from the same book so this is the same book that I took the little blue border strips out of and the maps I just cut out one of these sheep and I'm just gluing this down on the page with some PVA glue then I'm flicking back to the page where I left lots of room to paint the redwood forest and I'm just going straight in and painting the trees and I wanted to just kind of represent how tall and beautiful the trees were and also try and capture some of the colors from the forest so the trees actually do have quite a red toned bark to them and also the soil or the ground that you're walking on is also quite like red reddish pink and so I just wanted to paint these trees looking really really tall and it's kind of hard to paint the trees because there's not I was looking at my photos for reference again and there's not kind of a lot of um, definition, I suppose, in the way that the leaves look in the photos that I have. So I'm just kind of, again, just painting it the way that I remember it and 
just trying to represent the colors and just the height of those trees. So I decided to paint some of those trees there on the right hand side on that fold out page, just on that little strip there. And then I'm also going to paint a thicker forest scene on the left side above the three photos that I'd stuck to the page. Again, I'm just using the same gouache paints. So for the painting on the left side of the page, I decided to start it off differently just to try and give me a bit of a different outcome. So I painted the background. I kind of painted some green in the background and then I painted the ground. And then I went in and started painting in the tree trunks. And I tried to make the forest look a little bit thicker and paint more trees and just use more of those really warm tones that I remember from the forest. And I didn't probably give my layers of paint enough time to dry because I was just feeling a bit impatient. I wanted to continue on. So there was a little bit of smudginess happening while I was painting, but I think in the end it turns out okay. Like it's, I think it's a really fun thing to try and paint something from your memory and to try and represent how you remember it and the outcome always kind of surprises me in the end I because I always start off not really knowing how it's going to turn out or without much plan yeah it's always kind of surprising to see how the picture turns out in the end once the paint had dried I put out my Prisma color pencils and I'm just adding a bit more texture and like definition to the trees and the forest and so I went in with some browns and I kind of went over the tree trunks. I also added a bit more depth and texture to the ground in the picture and I also love using a white pencil just to add like little highlights. So I did this again on the tree trunks and then also through the trees so kind of like little bits of light flicking through the trees just to kind of bring in some of the lightness from the sky. My white pencil is the shortest pencil of the pencils that I have because I'm always sharpening. I'm always using it in pretty much every picture that I do. It's really, I think it's really helpful to add little highlights and little bits of definition with a white pencil. So this painting doesn't have any really great like technical um, techniques and have any great techniques. It's not a very amazing painting, but I think in the end, once you add your layers of paint and your layers of pencil, it can turn out really interesting, even if you're not like a very refined artist. On the right side of the page, I did the same thing with some green pencil and I think the white pencil again. I just added in those little highlights to the page. I didn't want to add too much to this side because I quite liked how those trees turned out. Then I'm just going to flick back to the first little painting that I did of the little countryside and again I'm just going to use those same colored pencils just to add back in a little bit more detail and texture so particularly in the trees I felt like those trees needed to have a little bit more shadow and depth and highlight to kind of to kind of look a little bit more like trees so I'm just doing that again with the white pencil and the green pencils just to kind of darken up the mountains behind it and then add a little bit of texture in the grass. Once I was happy with how the paintings turned out, I can start thinking about my written journaling. And so I use my favorite pen, my Pentel Energel pen to do most of the journaling on this spread. And I really like these pens because of how smooth they are to write with, especially if you're writing a lot. So first of all, for my first bit of journaling, I wanted to use my typewriter to type directly on this glassine paper bag so this paper bag I haven't yet attached to the page because I knew I wanted to run it through the typewriter and I wanted to type out a bunch of my journaling along the bottom of the bag and I wanted to leave a little space up the top of the bag to attach two of the Polaroid pictures which I had not yet attached so this journaling is particularly about the photos that you see on this particular page spread so I'm just kind of giving a bit of an overview of all of the things we saw and did on this day and then I could go ahead and I could stick this paper bag down on the page finally with double-sided tape and then slip in the extra bits back inside of it and then use the double-sided tape to attach those last two photos up above the journaling and I really really like how that turns out and I like how you can kind of see behind the journaling into what's inside the bag. Then I wanted to attach this little playing card which I've had in my stash for quite a while. It's this kiwi bird and I just decided to staple it inside this little 
page here where I had some room. And then I also wanted to add a stamp. So while we were at the Redwood Forest, I picked up this little Christmas tree ornament, which was, I think, a perfect souvenir for myself because I love having unique ornaments on my Christmas tree. And this ornament is going to be a bit of a like sentiment and memory of this trip and of my sister and her family over in New Zealand. So I have a stamp in my stash which reminded me of the ornament and I use that to kind of represent it in the journal. Then here you can see the pages once I've added in my written journaling. I did this off camera because I did quite a bit of journaling and I wanted to just sort of sit comfortably. I went and sat out in the sun and I just like recounted the trip that we had and some of the highlight moments that I wanted to record in my journal. I used my Pentel Energel pen to do majority of the journaling and you can see all of the little places where I was able to fit some journaling and I feel like I got most of the things that I want to write about written about in these pages. I really like how everything is starting to come together. Last of all, I wanted to pull out some of my stickers and just decorate the page. Now it's just time for a bit of fun relaxing stickers. So this aeroplane chipboard sticker is too thick. So what I like to do is I just peel off the back layers of it, leaving the front layer of it. It's still a little bit thick, but definitely not too thick to put in my journal and I'll just staple this down like a little chipboard piece. If you weren't worried about bulk or if you had a lot of room to grow in your journal uh, you could definitely just put the stickers down as they are but I think that's a good tip just to make them a bit thinner. And this sticker sheet this is a really old sticker sheet and these stickers aren't particularly sticky but I like the little kind of script words so I pulled off this one that says memories and I stuck that there on the first page where that little space was. And then I also put like some little tiny word stickers and some various like label stickers on the page. When I'm adding my stickers, I'm just looking for places on the page where there's like a bit of emptiness or space where something could be enhanced a little bit. I also have these sticker sheets which I purchased at the forest, at the Redwood Forest. And so I'm using some of those as well like the little sign that says New Zealand on this page and then some more little tiny stickers just to enhance the page and to help decorate it and bring everything together. I didn't show the process for every single sticker that I stuck to the page but at the end when I show you an overview of all the spread you'll see any that I missed in the process. I just had so much footage to edit together but yeah I hope this video didn't turn out too too long. I actually have been really enjoying watching longer format videos on YouTube recently I feel like because most other platforms you have quite short videos. I like to go to YouTube and just find there's longer formats that I can watch while I'm doing other things that I can have playing in the background either while I'm crafting or like working or cleaning or whatever it is. It's nice to have longer videos playing in the background so hopefully you guys like this one. You'll see that I didn't have a ton of space to fill on these pages so there wasn't a lot of space where I felt like I needed to stick stickers but I just enjoyed filling in the little gaps and I definitely wanted to use some of the stickers that I had bought in New Zealand. For the word or the phrase stickers that I use those older larger ones that aren't super sticky I went over the top of them with some clear sticky tape to help stick them down to the page and make sure they weren't going to come off and then I put out this sticker book this ransom note letter sticker book to write out the titles on this page so this page of the forest that I painted I felt like this painting wasn't super like it didn't feel like a focal point like it felt like I was missing something so I used these letter stickers over the top directly over the top and you just see me repositioning them to fit them a little bit better on the page. And then again, I use the clear sticky tape over the top of those letters just to make sure that they weren't going to come off. And that is the finished spread. So I did multiple pages. As I mentioned, lots of times it took me a long time to get this journaling done. But I had a lot of fun with it. I had so much stuff to play around with and to fit in in a creative way. I feel like this journaling really helps to capture my memories of the trip and these pages feel really special and actually this whole journal feels really special and I'm really excited to share a flip through of it soon because I feel like I've been able to capture a lot of like 
my life and happy memories and like special things and memories of people within this journal and yeah I really love it I think it's one of my favorite journals that I have filled so far so keep an eye out for that video if you are not yet subscribed to my channel I would love if you would join me here on my channel I share lots of journaling content I also make my own journals and I share tutorials from time to time and yeah I've got a whole playlist of journaling videos if you liked this type of video you can see me fill many different journals on my channel and yeah thank you so much if you have watched this video until the end i know this was a super long video and i really appreciate you being here and sticking around to see the final pages i hope wherever you are in the world you are doing really well and i will see you again soon in my next video Thank you.